Bitch, you good, fool. Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Guys, what's going on? Guys, I'm on the way to a Christmas Eve escapade. That's the best way I can explain this. Guys, this call just came in. This customer said that last night the heat stopped working and he smelled the burning smell. And he said this is a gas furnace. He said that he smelled the burning smell. And he turned the switch off and turned it back on. And it worked for like a minute and then it turned back off again. So guys, I don't know if this is a blow motor or one of the maybe one of the controls burned up. I'm on the way there right now. Let's go take a look and let's see what's going on. I'll see y'all when I get inside. All right, guys, I call this an escapade, and this job is going to live up to that name. Look at this. Guys, this is just another bad motor. You guys will see this when I get back inside. This customer had an air temp, 90% furnace, and the smell that they were smelling last night was this motor cooking like chestnuts on open flame. <laughs> guys, luckily I had another 5460 in the truck, and unfortunately, I well. Luckily, I had the motor, but unfortunately, I ran out of motor bracket, so I had to reuse the old bracket. And like I said, these things are kind of a pain in the ass, but guys, sometimes you got to do what you got to do, right? But guys, right now, I'm just retrofitting this new motor, and I'm going to go back inside. We're going to pop this bad boy in. I think this takes a 10 cap. I got to get another capacitor. All right, guys, but let me mount this bad boy on, and... I gotta carry this motor down the block and in the basement. All right, guys. Let me hit on my business. I'll see y'all in a little bit. All right, guys. Got everything in. And right now, just checking my wheel. Make sure I don't hear any sounds. Make sure everything is good. It is. All right, guys, I got to walk the plank. And this is quite the revelation. I think the last blow motor that I did, this was in the summertime. And, guys, it was like 90 degrees outside. I remember that because I did that motor replacement on live. And, guys, look at this. We go from 90 degrees to 20 degrees. You got to take the bad with the good, guys. You got to take the bad with the good. All right, guys. Let me lock the truck up, and I'll see y'all when I get down back in the basement. I'll see y'all in a little bit. All right, guys. This is our unit. And like I said, I already checked the humidifier filter and the air filter. Everything is clean. So, looks like that filter... That humidifier pad was already replaced. Cool. All right, guys. Let's get this motor in. Let's get this thing wired up. I'll see you in a little bit. All right, guys. Check this out. Just as I was recording that unit running, guys, listen to this, right? And by the way, that that customer is rocking and rolling. As you can see in the video, we got the new motor in. We put a brand new filter in, and the filter I put in was a 16 by 25, so that filter is gonna be a little bit longer, which will make it easier for that customer to replace the filter, but that customer scared away. But guys, listen to this, right? Um, when I was downstairs, this customer called. I think we were out there this past summer, I think either for the AC maintenance for or for a no AC call. I think it was a no AC call. And guys, this customer had a bad compressor and guys, by the way, this is an R22 unit. So what we did was we just recommended her replacing the unit and upgrading to a, a brand new coil and condenser. And we never heard back from her. You know, we followed up. So we just assumed that she may have, you know, found another contractor to replace the unit. But guys, this same customer called and she said that the furnace isn't working. And then like, she left a voicemail and I called her back when I got out of the basement. She said that um, they never, she never got the AC replaced. And the AC and the heat is the same age. And she said that another company came out and already told her that I guess the unit is leaking carbon monoxide. Guys, I don't know. But at this point, I don't know what I'm walking into. I don't know if this is going to be a seller's lead or if this is a simple fix. But guys, I, it's kind of weird. We already came out there um, and recommended replacing the AC. So I don't know. I don't think we ever did anything with the heat. I know we performed the maintenance on it before, but... 
I don't have any. I don't have a service record um, in regards to the to the heat portion here. Only the AC. But guys, let's go take a look. I was gonna put this on a separate video, but fuck it. Let's see what's going on. I'll see you guys when I get there. All right, guys. This is what was opened up. And this is our, this is just a straight outflow, 90%. Linux furnace, and this is a condenser with a back compressor from over the summer. Hey guys, what's weird is that I got my thermostat calling, and the only way that I can turn this unit on is by jumping out R and W. But right now, I need to run this unit to make sure that it's not leaking carbon monoxide in the supply. And next, I gotta look at that thermostat to make sure that no one unhooked the wires on it. Upon further review, I turned this thing off and on like three times and then it blinked, replaced batteries. So what I did was I just went to the truck, put new batteries in, and I want to show you guys a cool trick with testing these Honeywell thermostats. As you see here, you see the pins? Right now we're testing the heat. So it gives you the indentation you see underneath my finger where it says R. If I check for continuity between R and W with this thing calling and I do get continuity, that means this thermostat is good. But if I test this, if I test continuity between R and W and I don't get anything with the thermostat calling, that means this thermostat is shot. First, let's test it. This being off. Try to do with the two hands here. Oh my gosh. Oh, you see that? Or W. That's good. That's what we want. Nothing. Now. Turn this on, and it says heat on. See that? So when I try this again, I should get continuity. door switch in and let's put this back on the wall and see what's going on I'll be right back 
Still nothing. And I still got 24 from RW. All right, let me try jumping out the wires to make sure my wires are intact because I jumped it out from the board. I'm gonna take the face of the thermostat off the wall and I'm gonna jump it out from the sub base. Yeah guys, even with continuity, it's still not turning this unit on, so. And everything's wired up right. Hold on. Damn, you see that? All right, guys. Let's do a free play, free frame. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Guys, hold on. Guys, I don't think this was no accident. I think the other company cut this wire because they didn't want this customer to, to use the heat, but I still needed to test this unit to see what's going on because guys, the other company didn't even give this customer a diagnosis. They just told her the heat exchanger was cracked. But right now, the only thing I did was replace the batteries in the thermostat. Definitely could open this up and check that flame sensor. As a matter of fact, let me do that. I'll be right back, guys. And one soggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to play. Rudolph. Rudolph, which you know so bright. All right, don't follow me now. <laughs> hey guys, I ran this unit for about five minutes and it gave me a pressure switch open error. This was the switch that was in here. And I cleaned my, I took my flame sensor out. The flame sensor wasn't too bad. Like I said, I think we came out here at least two years ago. It wasn't bad at all. And I don't think anything got replaced in this furnace, but guys, like I said, within 10 minutes of runtime, they gave me this error. And look at this, 1.21, which is great. That tells me this induced motor is definitely pulling proper draft and guys I already looked at the drain line they got the heat tape on the drain line outside but guys for sure this customer said that last night she turned the thermostat up to 80 and well she turned the thermostat up to heat and it wasn't running she turned it off and on a few times and they couldn't figure out what's going on the heat didn't turn on at all so based on what I'm seeing after we fix the wire and put the batteries in. It seems like this pressure switch was sticking. So, guys, so let's put a new switch in. And let's pick this up from here. I'll see you in a little bit. All right, guys. today's repair was doable long term she should definitely want to replace this furnace but like i said guys if a repair can be made and we can somewhat guarantee it like i said without just coming back to become a pain in the tail for either us or the customer like i said most repairs 
can be made as long as you can get parts that can work because I spoke to this customer and what she's going to do. She hasn't forgotten about getting the AC replaced. They're probably just going to wait until the spring to get the heat and AC done. But yeah, guys. And also, I went inside and this thing was not leaking carbon monoxide. But guys, that's another story. I just covered up the doohickeys there. And yeah, guys, there you have it. No heat, dead batteries and thermostat, plus a brand new switch. And I cleaned the flame sensor and this customer is rocking and rolling. And hopefully this time, guys, in the spring, we can get this squared away so this customer won't have any issues either in the summer or next fall. So, all right, guys, it's cool. I gotta get up out of here. There you guys have it. That's two service calls in one. And guys, I'll play around with the content as we go along. Instead of doing one and one, I could do two and two or three all in one. So guys, be on the lookout. Like I said, I think I got another call to do on, what's tomorrow, Wednesday? I think I gotta do another call Thursday, but we'll see what I find when I get there. But guys, I'm about to rock out. Merry Christmas to y'all mofos. I will see y'all in the next one. Peace.